Hi everybody, I'm Lily, and this is our world. What do you think of my new plant? I just got some seeds to grow more just like it. You see, I'm getting ready to join one of NASA's engineering design challenges. I'm going to design and build a plant growth chamber like the astronauts might use. I want to make sure my seeds grow, so I've got a lot to learn. I know that a plant is a living thing, just like people. And just like people, it has specific needs in order to survive. But a plant does things very differently than people. So I need to know more about plants before I can design my chamber. My teacher, Mrs. Jones, helped me set up a video chat with Dr. Gregory Goins. He's a research scientist at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, and he knows a lot about plants. I hope he'll be able to help me learn how to take care of mine. Oh, there he is now. Hello, Dr. Goins. I'm Lily. Mrs. Jones said you would be coming by. What can I help you with? I'm trying to grow some plants, and I want to make sure I take care of all of their needs so they can grow big and beautiful. Mrs. Jones said that light is a very important need for plants. It sure is. I'm planning on growing my plants inside. Is that going to be a problem? Well, tell me what you know about light. Well, Mrs. Jones taught us that light travels in waves. And visible light has many colors called a spectrum. But I'm not sure why plants need light. Plants need light as an energy source to power the food making process. Wait, plants make their own food? How do they do that? It's a metabolic process called photosynthesis that happens in the green parts of the plant. Photosynthesis? What's that? You'll get a clue if you break the word apart. Photo means light, and synthesis means making food. During photosynthesis, molecules of carbon dioxide and water are restructured into sugar. And this reshuffling requires energy. So the energy is the light from the sun? Exactly. Light is absorbed by a special pigment in the plant called chlorophyll. It's the molecule that makes plant leaves green. Huh. I'm not green, so I guess that means people don't have chlorophyll inside them. And I can't make my own food, so plants must be a really important part of my food chain. That's right. Photosynthesis is central to life on Earth as we know it. Everything animals eat has come from the photosynthetic process. So if light is so important to plants, what do I need to think about if I grow my plants indoors? When growing plants indoors, there are two factors to consider, the quality of the light and the quantity of the light. What do you mean, quality of light? You learn that the spectrum of sunlight has many colors in it. Plants require mostly red and blue light to grow well. Artificial light, such as the light from light bulbs, doesn't usually have all the colors of the spectrum, and plants don't tend to grow very well under it. So is there a better way for me to get light to my plants indoors than regular light bulbs? Yes. Fluorescent bulbs, such as this one, have a much better balance of the spectrum, and they grow plants very well. And what about the quantity of light? That refers to the brightness of light. Direct sunlight usually has more than enough quantity and the correct quality to successfully grow plants. What if I put my plants right in front of a large window? As long as your plants get direct sunlight, all plants are different, so you'll need to find out how much light your plants need. I guess I'll need to do some tests and figure that out. Oh, one more question. Why does NASA study plant growth? With astronauts staying in space longer and eventually going to other planets and beyond, they would need to grow their own food. But on a spacecraft, there aren't any big windows. And even if there were, you would have only 45 minutes of daylight every 90 minutes while orbiting the Earth. But if they don't have enough time to get light from the sun, how will the plants grow? One lighting system that holds a lot of promise is light emitting diodes, and they last a very long time. They also emit a very narrow part of the spectrum, pure red or pure blue. Those are the colors that plants like best, but wouldn't these lights affect the way the plants look? Remember that plants don't use the green part of the spectrum. They reflect green light more than any other color while absorbing the red and blue light. Therefore, when grown under red and blue light, they absorb 100% of the available light and appear black. Black plants? That wouldn't be very pretty. I wonder if other colors of light would change the way a plant grows, or the way they look. I'd better hit the books and find out the best way to get light to my plants. Thanks, Dr. Goins. Whew, that's a lot of reading. But now I know a lot more about taking care of plants. Let me tell you what I've learned. In order to make food, plants need to carry out photosynthesis. That takes place in the leaves of the plant. And in order to do photosynthesis, 
the leaves need water, carbon dioxide, and sunlight. The chlorophyll in the leaves traps the energy of the sunlight, and the water comes up through the roots. Then the leaves get carbon dioxide from the air through tiny pores or holes on the undersides of the leaves. The plant uses the trapped sunlight to turn the water and carbon dioxide into oxygen and glucose, a special kind of sugar. Plants use the glucose for energy. Another thing I found out about plants is that they can move. Not like you or me, of course. That would be scary. But they can react to a change in their environment or stimulus. These reactions are called tropisms. For example, a plant will grow toward its source of light, or it will grow its roots toward a source of water. And the roots of most plants grow downward, the same direction as the pull of gravity. How do you think plants would grow in a reduced gravity environment like the International Space Station? Hmm, would I need to change my design for a plant growth chamber if it went to space? Well, I have a lot of designing to do, so I need to get working. After all, NASA's waiting. And if you'd like to join one of NASA's engineering design challenges, just check out the NASA website at www.nasa.gov and search for design challenges. I'll see you next time on Our World. Hey mom, I need some adult supervision.